Talking about factorials. So first, um, this is going to relate to uh, the shortcut that we talked about in class for counting tasks with multiple parts. We said that we could multiply the number of ways to complete each part of the task to get the total number of ways to complete the task. We end up having to multiply something like 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. This can be abbreviated using the notation exclamation point. So um, any 5 down to 1, the product of all those factors, is called 5 factorial. n factorial would be n times 1 less than n times 2 less than n, all the way down to 1. Let's do some examples here. 4 factorial would be 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is 24. Now 4 minus 1 factorial, part b, remember we do what's inside the parentheses first. So first you subtract 4 minus 1 and get 3. So we're really looking for 3 factorial. 3 times 2 times 1 equals 6. And then for part C, you have to evaluate each factorial first, or at least write it out as a product first. In other words, don't try to divide 3 into 5. That would be false. So think of it as 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 3 times 2 times 1. You can multiply those out and use your calculator, but you can also use the fact that 3 divided by 3 is 1, 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 1 divided by 1 is 1. So really, all you have to multiply is the 5 times the 4, and that gives you 20. This is important, an important fact. Zero factorial, people often think it's zero, but it's actually defined to be 1. So why are we talking about factorials? Because the number of ways to arrange a set of objects if you're using all of the objects, if you're arranging all of them, is going to involve a factorial. For example, let's say that we have five students and five seats in a row of desks, right? And we want to seat the students in those five seats, and we want to figure out in how many ways we can do that. So there are five students who could sit in the first seat. Now once that person is seated, they can't sit next to themselves, right? So there's only four students left who could sit in the next seat. And then once that person's seated, that leaves three possibilities for the next seat. Once that person's seated, two possibilities for the next seat. And then the last seat, we know who's going to sit in that. There's only one person left. So by the fundamental counting principle, we multiply the number of ways to complete each part of the task and we get 5 factorial. So whenever you're trying to find a total number of ways to arrange a certain number of objects, distinct objects, uh, we can use a factorial. How many ways can you line up six different books on a shelf? And you could use the fundamental counting principle and say, okay, let's see, I have six positions on the shelf. Six possible books could go in the first position. That leaves 5 for the second, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. The fundamental counting principle works great, but if you remember that it's always going to turn out that way when you have to arrange objects, then you could just say, oh, that's going to be 6 factorial. 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is 720. The technique that we just discussed works perfectly as long as we have distinct objects. But sometimes we have um, objects that can't be distinguished from one another. And so in that case, it changes the number of distinguishable possibilities. So as an example, suppose that you wanted to arrange the letters of the word dad. I'm going to change the problem temporarily and say uh, the letters in the word dad, we have the first D and the second D. So D1 and D2. Okay, so if they were distinguishable like that, we just saw that there would be three, since there's three objects we would be arranging, the three distinguishable letters, then there would be three factorial or six ways to arrange the letters. And they're listed here. We have D1, A, D2, D1, D2, A, and so on. But really, we can't distinguish between the D1 and the D2. So we've overcounted D1, A, D2, and D2, A, D1, these are really the same. And then the two in purple are the same, D, D, A, D, D, A. And then the two in red are the same, A, D, D, A, D, D. So because we had two 
objects that really are the same, we've overcounted by a multiple or a factor of two. So the way that we should approach this problem would be first pretend like you could. So you'd find the three factorial and then you're going to divide by the number of ways to arrange the D's, the repeated objects. So we've overcounted by a factor of two factorial and so we're going to divide by that in order to get to the number that, of really distinguishable arrangements. So 3 factorial divided by 2 factorial is 6 divided by 2, which is 3. So those are, that's really the, the actual distinguishable arrangements. So as a formula for the number of distinguishable arrangements of n objects where one or more subsets consists of lookalikes, we're going to take n factorial based on the total number of objects and then we're going to divide by the number of ways to arrange the repeats. So let's try an example. Determine the number of distinguishable arrangements of the letters in the word initially. Okay, there are nine letters total. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But we have some groupings of, of uh, repeat letters. We have one, two, three I's, two L's. So we would take the nine factorial, which represents the number of ways to arrange nine distinct letters, and we'll divide by how much we've overcounted, three factorial times two factorial. By the way, in your calculator, you can calculate factorials, but I just want to, for now, we'll go over where that button is also. Um, but for now, let's just notice that this is 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 divided by 3 times 2 times 1 times 2 times 1. So one thing you could do, um, because sometimes calculators get a little fussy when the numbers get too big, um, one thing you can do is write this out and then cancel 3 divided, 3, 2, 1 divided by 3, 2, 1 just leaves 1. 4 divided by 2 leaves 2. And then you can just multiply 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 2 on your calculator to see that you get 30,240. If this video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video. And you guys have a good week.